Hi, I'm the host of Tech Talk with Craig Peterson, heard weekly on Clear Channel Radio with this week's Tech Searchlight. We're live on the floor of the Consumer Electronics Show out in Vegas, the International Consumer Electronics Show, in fact. All kinds of great technology. We're going to be speaking with more guests as the day goes on today. And it's really kind of cool because we're seeing what's happening, not just now, but this is kind of a crystal ball event. We're looking forward the next 6 to 12 months, even beyond that, because the technology that's here today is the type of thing that's going to be changing our lives really in the fairly near future and the very near future in some cases. We're joined now by Art Swift. He's a VP over at MIPS Technologies. Now, for those that don't know, MIPS has been involved for a lot of years in some very cutting-edge technology that helps to improve performance and reduce cost in many of the consumer goods that we're buying in this day and age. You can find them online at MIPS.com. Art, welcome to Tech Talk with Craig Peterson. Well, thanks, Craig. It's great to be here. Well, MIPS now has moved not just on the desktop or in the data center, but onto these small portable devices. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing there, what's happening really in the industry, and and everything is changing, particularly since many companies are now away from that Wintel monopoly. Oh, absolutely, Craig. Things are changing fast. And as you said, this is an advanced look for a year, two years, three years into the future here at CES. So we're seeing some really cool things. Now, MIPS is at the heart of all the digital consumer devices that are in your home. So in your house, uh, being a techie, you probably have 10 or more MIPS-based products that you might not even realize. Your DTV, your set-top box, your Blu-ray player, your wireless router, all those use MIPS-designed processors. Handhelds, we're also big in uh, video cameras, still cameras, mobile internet devices, GPS systems, car nav, Uh, You name it. So MIPS is absolutely not part of that Wintel monopoly. We're everywhere else. Our licensees are shipping about 500 million units a year into consumer electronics. Now, what we're talking about really is the cords, the CPU, the central processing unit, if you will, inside all of these devices. And by moving away from, you know... I don't want to name Intel, so I won't, but their processors tend to be very expensive, and even their newer processors tend to be very power-hungry. So you guys have been able to really concentrate in on making processors that are power-efficient and that are much less expensive because, again, you're not supporting all of this legacy code that goes back to 1970. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. The whole uh, approach we use for designing processors is design something that's really performance uh, efficient, power efficient, using uh, less energy, but at a very small silicon cost. So uh, it's cost effective for a consumer electronics maker to use the chips. Now what's interesting though, it's Moore's Law at work because we started out as a, a big iron company back in uh, the 80s. Right. And then we were acquired by Silicon Graphics, and we became the engines that powered Jurassic Park and all the great movies of the 90s. And then we spun out as an intellectual property company, licensing that scalable risk technology to a, a host of other companies. So it's all based on that initial heritage as a really high-performance computing company. So let's get out of the geek side of this whole thing now, and let's talk about product. There are a lot of consumer products you mentioned already, from from set-top boxes and DVD players, TVs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A lot of buzz has been building because of Google's announcement here, where they now have their new Android telephone. You have Android being used by all of the major carriers now, and I think we're starting to see see a move to much more open systems. And you mentioned licensing, in fact, some of your MIPS technology for the processors themselves. Where is that all going? Well, Android is a huge inflection point in the whole industry, not just mobile phones. And the greatest thing that Google did was they open sourced it. So their initial targets were to bring Android-based phones onto the marketplace, the Droid and the Nexus and the like. But the coolest part about it is Android is a perfect solution for all consumer electronics. Now what's happening is internet connectivity is coming into every internet, uh, every consumer electronics device. Everything's internet connected and users want to get their content from anywhere out there. They want to be able to not only get it off their network, off their PC, off their hard drive, PVR, but they want to go out to the cloud, they want to go to YouTube, Hulu, wherever to get their content. 
and Android helps enable that. It's a great platform to build the future consumer electronics devices. And again, it keeps the power usage down so it lasts longer on batteries, keeps the heat down, less heat dissipation, and also helps keep the cost down. We're speaking right now with Art Swift. He's a VP over at MIPS Technology. You can find them online at MIPS.com. Actually, that's MIPS Technologies. And we're talking a little bit about where things are going over the next, really, the few years here. So you're providing a lot of compute power, much more than was available just even a year ago, for low price still. The price point seems to stay about the same, but it's really improving in performance. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. So the major trends, of course, are that all sorts of different devices are converging together. So, for instance, your home gateway merges with your home router and these kinds of things. Uh, MIDs uh, merging with smartphones. Uh, personal media players merging. So, that coupled with internet connectivity and all the video content that people want to show just requires a heck of a lot more performance. And that's the strength of the, this MIPS-based processor approach. You need a really a high performance computing solution deeply embedded in all your consumer devices. But it has to be at very low power and it also has to be very cost effective because actually I think the prices, you get more and more for what you're paying for. So if well, it, yeah, as the prices the, are coming down. As the volume goes up, those costs go down too, mm -hmm. which is really nice. So Android is already on mobile phones. Uh, where is that moving to? Are, are we seeing other devices that are going to be powered by Android? Oh, heck yeah. Android is already on set-top boxes. It's on... Uh, uh, personal media players, it's on MIDs, uh, the mobile internet devices, it's on network picture frames, it's on nav systems, it's going everywhere. Google just did a great job of architecting a software platform that delivers real user benefits. And this provides also some, some real potential here for migration. And I, I really like that concept myself because it's, it's kind of the old Unix concept. You write it once and it'll run on anything, anywhere, at any time. So are we starting to see some of these applications now? What is going to happen with Android? Yeah, that, that's absolutely key. Write once, run anywhere is the concept of uh, Android. So yes, mobile phone-based applications that are written will be portable over to these consumer electronics devices, and we're already seeing it. Now, MIPS' job in all this was to make Android extensible for high def. We really brought Android to the high def world. There's a lot more compute resources required, and it's just a, a bunch of software work that's required to extend Android into that world. But the applications can move from mobile phone to GPS to handheld to consumer electronics devices. Write once, run anywhere. <laughs> which is a great way to do it. Now, are we likely to see the MIPS processor line in these web books or netbooks that are coming out as well? We're already there. So uh, in our suite, we were showing Android-based netbooks, and uh, it's a big growth area, we think, particularly in the Asia-Pacific markets. Most people don't really seem to understand. What really matters isn't that you have a certain computer, or certain speed, processor speed, or you're running Windows 7 or whatever it is. What you want is a web browser. What you want is a word processor. And if you can deliver that less expensively and give a better performance even, a better user experience, you're better off. And that's really what you guys are aiming at here. Yeah, I think you just hit the nail on the head. The whole key for the future is that users don't want to compromise their experience. They want to get all their content from anywhere. They want to have access to it anytime on any device. This is the key for the future, is that everything's connected, the source of that content doesn't matter. It's going to shift all over. Where you display it doesn't matter. You're going to shift it from your TV to your phone to your netbook to wherever. But all the way along, it's got to be a great experience with the best performance and all at a very low price. About 30 seconds left, Art. Anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, well, the other thing that I see at this show is the 3D TVs that I think are really cool. Now, I know there's a lot of buzz right now about Avatar and the movies that are out there in the theaters, but I want you to know on the new digital TVs with 3D capabilities, a movie like Avatar looks even better than in the movie theater. 
And of course, those are all MIPS-based designs as well, I have to say. so <laughs> As it happens, right? No, no big deal there. Uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of that in years to come here as 3D gets better, as we get more and more 3D content as well. And look for MIPS. If you are someone who makes designs, embedded computer systems, etc., go to MIPS.com to find out more. We'll be back with more right from the floor of the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, Nevada with more Tech Talk with Craig Peterson in just a minute.